Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of the glory. The glory and the honor, God. I praise your awesome name, O oh God. I give you glory. You are the good shepherd, O oh God, the bishop of our souls. You are the living word, O oh God, and we honor your presence tonight, O oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for being good and merciful towards us, your children. Your word declares, Father God, that you're faithful to hear your children's cry and answer. Lord, I come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have created, that we can rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord God, for being our provider, being our healer, being our deliverer. I thank you for being our peace of mind, O oh God, regulating our hearts. Father, tonight as we prepare to have this class tonight, speak to us by divine revelation. Cleanse our minds, cleanse our hearts. Forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowing sins, O oh God, and purify our hearts, O oh God, through the blood of the Lamb. Saturate in your anointing, God, empower us by your grace. Father God, use me as your vessel to teach your word by divine revelation. To have ears to hear your voice speaking, to receive the revelation from the Holy Spirit, to point to the hearts of the listeners, O oh God, tonight, that will transform our hearts, transform our lives, change our minds, to be more committed to you, Father God, and serving you for the rest of the days of our lives. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Truly, God is amazing. He's sovereign. He's holy. He's righteous, he's just, he's majestic. He's everything we need and more. And we have the power and the ability to call on the name of the Lord until we get an answer. And God will answer according to his will because he's faithful. So, so call upon the name of the Lord and he will answer and show you great and mighty things that you have not known. We're living in perilous times where people are perishing all around us every day. Uh, tragedies are taking place worldwide. And as a child of God, we have to get back to the place of prayer and consecration. Spending time in the presence of the Lord. Because the enemy is so busy. He, he's doing anything in his power to keep us walking in darkness. We have to get to the place in ourselves we allow the Spirit of God to draw us on our knees in prayer, to seek in His face for answers, to bring change in our nation, in our cities, and our communities. Without prayer, men are perishing. Jesus says men must always pray and not faint. It's a requirement as a believer that we are to pray. So when you enter to your secret closet, and you pray in secret. Your heavenly Father who sees in secret will reward thee openly. That's a promise we have from God. Amen. Last week, we left off talking about the Python spirit. How the enemy operates under the Jezebel spirit to squeeze the life out of you as a child of God to make you dormant in your anointing, to stop you from walking in your purpose and abiding in the truth of God's word. The enemy brings illusions and delusions in our lives to get us discombobulated and confused. If he can get you to the place where you stop trusting God's word and doubting God's ability to keep you and sustain you, you'll follow after the pattern of wickedness in your heart and live a damnable life that leads you down a pathway of destruction. 
We have to get back to the place we seek God's face for who he is. Without prayer, we can't make it. That's why we have a high priest who forever live in the body to make intercession for us. And all we got to do is trust in God's word, believe in Jesus Christ all our heart, that he's right there in the midst to bring you through every trial, every test, every situation that you encounter in your life. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I want to read a devotion. Then we go into prayer. We have a couple of devotions, actually. Then we're going to go into prayer tonight. I mean, going to our, I mean, the lesson. We just had prayer. We'll get into our lesson. It says, worship me only. Whatever occupies your mind the most becomes your God. You hear that? Whatever takes residency that sits as the king of your life becomes your God. Worries, if indulged, develop into idols. Did you know that your worry can become an idol? Because it takes the place of God in your life. Because you focus all your attention and your efforts on worrying about things that's not in your power to change. Trying to fix situations you can't fix. Trying to change people you can't change. It becomes your idol. Anxiety gains a life of its own. Parasitically infesting your mind. The word says anxiety in the heart of a man will weigh you down. But a broken spirit drives the bones. Anxiety is a form of worrying. And worrying will keep you in a restless night where you can't sleep, tossing and turning, getting headaches, and calling yourself to be self-inflicted with illnesses that's not in God's power, that's not for you. Because you allow it to be a parasite in your mindset. Then he goes and says, break free from this bondage by affirming your trust in me. Break free tonight. You got to want to be free. God is not going to force you to be free. He gives you the opportunity. He presents the moment. He gives you the chance to make the decision. To break free from this type of bondage by trusting him and refreshing yourself in my presence. That is so amazing. You can find a refreshing by resting in the promise of God's word. Just cast your cares upon the Lord. Don't even worry about the stuff around you no more. Just be at peace. And God's presence will blanket you. He'll cover you. What goes on in your mind is invisible. It doesn't come into fruition until you give it the power of thought to activate it. What goes on in your mind is invisible. It's undetectable to other people. People can't read your mind. They can't read your thought life. They can suggest things that you're thinking about. But they don't know you like you know yourself. You know what you're thinking about and you know what you're about to do before you do it. And God knows the very hairs on our heads. And he says he numbered them all by one. He knows every thought before you utter a word out of your mouth. What goes on in your mind is invisible, undetectable to other people. But I read your thoughts continually. This is God speaking. Searching for evidence of trust in me. God reads your mind. God reads my mind. And he's searching for evidence. Some proof. Some validation in your heart. That you trust in him. I rejoice when your mind turns towards me. God says he rejoices over you. He rejoices over you with singing. He fills your heart with such a peace of mind because you trust him. Guard your thoughts diligently. Guard your thoughts 
diligently. Keep doing it. Don't quit. Be faithful. Make a determination. You're going to guard your mind. Good thoughts, choices will keep you close to me. Isn't that wonderful? God says good thoughts will keep you close to him. From the book, More of You, God. And I just read this one from um, Jesus Calling. Jesus Calling. I just read it from here. Jesus Calling. Amen. So the next book is More of You, God. And it says, I want to see the manifestation of, your, of the will of God in my life. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. I want to see the manifestation of the glory of God in my life. Lord, today I do not want to be stuck in that place called the natural. Isn't that something? You can be stuck in a place called the natural. But God says today, I don't want you to be stuck. Give me one second. I forgot to turn on this uh, Google Meet. Give me one second. Let's see if anybody's going to come on tonight. Glory to God. Praise his name. Amen, 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 amen. All right. Glory to God. All right. So, Lord, today I do not want to be stuck in the place called the natural. You know what that is talking about? The soulish realm, the fleshly realm. You need to abide in the spiritual realm every day of your life. Stand on the word of truth. Be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. Allow the Spirit of God to change your mindset, your heart, and your attitude by submitting to his lordship and his authority. Father God, I magnify your holy name. Lord, I want to be more like you, Jesus. As my neighbors and friends encounter me, let Jesus in me light up my surroundings. I love that part right there. Because when Jesus lights up your surroundings, he illuminates your pathway. So when the enemy tries to come against you, coming in stealth mode, secretive through other people. You'll be guarded by the Holy Spirit. He'll show you what the enemy is trying to do to you to stop you in your track. Because the light will begin to reveal where he's coming from. One thing I, I, I love about the Old Testament is every time the children of Israel were about to go into a battle, Joshua always sought the Lord. Should we go up against this army or should we not go up against this army? Some armies, God told them they don't need to fight. So the Lord is going to give them victory. And then some battles they had to fight. I remember King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 when he found out the different invading armies would come against Judah and Jerusalem. He called a fast on the animals and all the people of the kingdom and sought the Lord. When he sought the Lord, he did not release the people from fasting or the animals from fasting until he got an answer from God. And God sent the prophet to speak to him and tell him, on tomorrow, when you get ready to go to battle, send forth the praises and the worshipers. Because the Lord himself is going to give you the victory. So we got to know that when light shines, I already have the victory. Lord, I want you to get all the glory. Father, so I will be equipped to do the assignment you have appointed me to accomplish. Let me tap into the supernatural. This is a very vital point right here as a child of God. You have to tap into the supernatural every day of your life. Because if you don't tap into the supernatural, how you expect to fight a spiritual battle with fleshly weapons? It don't work. We fight fleshly battles with the spiritual weapons. 
and God equips you with everything you need to defeat your adversary. And it's all wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in Jesus Christ. You get into Jesus, he gets into you. I will not wait for people to tell me what to do or wait to be accepted by them. I will not wait for people to tell me what to do. You need to know what God called you to do. As a child of God, you need to be spending time in God's presence and asking God, God, what is my assignment? What am I called to do for the kingdom of God to bring you glory? God will reveal to you a revelation from his word. And that word will be tied to your assignment, attached to your purpose, and will manifest by the supernatural power of God into your life. Just a whisper in my ear from you, God, is all I need. Can you say that tonight? Is your friends whispering in your ear? Is that good enough? Is your parents whispering in your ear? Is that good enough? Is your pastor whispering in your ear? Is that good enough? Is your association, the people you're surrounded by, speaking into your ear? Is that good enough? We have to guard our ear gate because the adversary is so cunning and crafty and deceitful and malicious looking for the opportunity to enter to your ear gate to feed you with fear, doubt, and unbelief to stop you from walking in your purpose and the assignment going into your life. Just a whisper in my ear from you, God, is all I need. Great are you, Lord. My life changes. We acknowledge who God is. He's great. He's mighty. He's holy. He's sovereign. He's majestic. He's just. He reigns forever. He's the king of glory. He's the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. I can go on and on about how good God is. He's my provider. He's my healer. He's my redeemer. I prosper and illuminate with more of you, God. That is so amazing. Just know I can be illuminated just by connected, being connected to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. My whole life radiates with the glory of God. When Moses was on the mountain, I said, Lord, show me your glory. All I want to see is your glory. And God told Moses, no man can look for my glory and live. But I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rocks in a high place. I'm going to let you see my backside. That's how powerful God is. And God showed Moses a glimpse of his glory. And Moses' face shined with the glory of God when he came down from the mountaintop. Have you ever been in a place and someone said, you, you glowing. There's something different about you. I, I see something different in you. What is it? It provides an opportunity to, to witness to the individual of your testimony of how God changed your life. Amen, amen, amen. Let's get into our lesson tonight. Jezebel quenches the anointing. Jezebel quenches the anointing. Last week, we, I was talking about a prophet, prophet when he prophesies. That when he prophesies a word that's supposed to be from the Lord, that word will manifest. It'll come to pass. It will be revealed. And God will show you what he has spoken in your life and cause it to happen in the due season. There's a season where God's prophetic words will come to pass in your life. Sometimes prophecy spoken. This, this is a really good point here. Pay attention to this. 
Sometimes God will have someone prophesy a rhema word, a word spoken from God to you of what God is about to do in your life. And we get upset because it don't happen. We think it should happen. Prophecies did not come by the will of man, by the old, old time, by the will of man. But the Holy Man of God spake. And they were moved by the Holy Ghost, right? So even the prophets who wrote the books of the gospel, they prophesied what Jesus told them to speak. And it came to pass in the due season God ordained for it to be. Some prophecy spoken in your life may be a year from now or two years or 20 years from now. But you got to have enough faith to hold on to that word. To whatever God spoke to you, don't allow the enemy to discourage you from believing the word God spoke to you. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. So Jezebel, quenches the anointing. This is something I was looking up earlier. I'm going to show you what I found. The word quench is a word means to satisfy a thirst, right? We all know about that. When you're thirsty, you want to quench your thirst. You want something to satisfy you. Something to suffice you. Make you feel good. It also means to put out as a fire, flames, or light. Quench the flames. The enemy wants to quench your anointing. He wants to suppress your anointing. He wants to put out your anointing. He wants to put darkness in your life to produce nothing but rebellion. So suppress Sparkly, when the current is cut off in an inductive circuit or suppress an oscillation or dis discharge in component or device, suppress or crush completely. Physical, re phys physics reduce the degree of the luminescence or phosphorus in excited molecules and, and materials by adding a suitable substance. So quench. So there's many different forms of what quench means. And the enemy knows if I can cut off the circuit, which is the bloodline that connects you to Jesus Christ, he can stop you from operating in your purpose. Isn't that something how the enemy knows exactly what to do in your life to stop you and prevent you from walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at this. Jezebel quenched the anointing. Not only does Jezebel desire to steal future inheritance and blessings, but this evil power targets anointing. She got her eyes set up for your anointing. The spirit of the enemy, the python, the witches, the warlock, demonic forces, are people on assignment awaiting to take your anointing. And that's something. The devil's a lie because he can't stop God from moving in your life. He can only bring distractions. Is it clear, Pastor Terry, now? I, I just got your message. Your screen is clear. Okay. Is there anything on it right now? Just send me a message if it is. Okay, so. So the enemy knows how powerful you are. How you become a threat against his kingdom. So what he does, he dispatched his cohorts to come against you, to snuff out the fire of the Spirit of God in your heart. Because he knows that I can influence you with his evil enticements. He can steal your future inheritance. He can steal your blessings. You know what your future inheritance is? 
is living and abiding in eternity with Jesus Christ forever. He wants you to not see that, to attain that. The precious promise God has given you. God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And let me know that if I can blind you with his evil power, he can stop you from operating your anointing. When, the church, when our church experienced Jezebel wrath, we called our leadership team together to fast and pray. It was a time to expose the spirit to the congregation and defeat it. You hear this? We just talked about this last week and the week before about this pastor was going to church for prayer, the leading people in prayer. And all of a sudden, a spirit came upon him to make him weak, nauseated, to stop him. And he had to pray a prayer of repentance in the congregation to get the people back to God. And there was a, young, a woman in his congregation who was under the influence of witchcraft. And as they began to pray, she yelled out, God is not in this place. It's false prophecies being spoken and all this rhetoric. She was speaking, right? And the pastor recognized it was a spirit and started praying against that spirit. And because of that, then he, he called the woman to the altar to pray for her. She had such a resistance. She didn't want to be prayed for because the spirit had so much power and control of her. So as he continued to seek the Lord, the Lord told him what to do. So he asked the lady, she wouldn't join church. <clears throat> and she did eventually join church, even though she resisted and opposed at first, but she joined the church. And so the same spirit we talked about began to go through the congregation trying to find accusations, any reason for people to stop following the shepherd. You got people in today's time in our churches. They come to church with different motives. Some have good intentions, some have bad intentions. Some are peepers. They're looking and plotting and planning against your demise of your church. And God is saying to the congregation, it's time to pray. So he said we have to lead the congregation in prayer in order to defeat the spirit. On one day I was to preach and expose the manifestation of Jezebel. I woke with a sickening headache and could barely get out of bed. I struggled to get to church and I felt weak and faint. And this is the story I was just talking about. As I began to preach, I became so confused and, barely, and could barely speak. That's how the enemy does. He wants to confuse your language, confound your thought life, where you can't think, or think straight. He wants to stop you from declaring the word of God because he knows once the word of God goes to the atmosphere, he got to flee. I heard the Lord say, Jezebel has targeted your anointing. Do not allow her to seduce you into stopping. Rebuke the spirit. And I will empower you. I knew that Jezebel had no power unless she was able to seduce us. If she can seduce us into believing her lies, then she can gain the victory. You know, that's something we have to pay attention to. Because the enemy knows exactly what to do in your life to seduce you, to distract you, to stop you, to defeat you. And we have to really, really be careful how we allow the enemy to influence us. Because the enemy is really cunning and crafty and doing everything in his power to stop you in your tracks. But you got to be prayed up as a child of God, be on guard. Because the enemy is not playing fair. He's coming in with assault missiles 
to assassinate you in your purpose. You got to be on, on guard. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. My, my, my. This is a good lesson. I pray this helped you tonight. Amen. The Lord reminded me that other manifestations of Jezebel, witchcraft, were dizziness and confusion. So I asked the congregation to pray with me and rebuke the manifestation of Jezebel. You hear this? He recognized the spirit. He didn't try to conquer it on his own strength. But he asked the congregation to join in prayer with him to defeat this spirit. We have to get to a place in ourselves where we try to realize that I can't fix this battle and fight on my own strength. I need to have other people to pray with me, come together with me, because one put thousand to flight, two can send 10,000 to flee, because the word of God tells it is power and strength and togetherness. Our whole lesson has been talking about the three-strand cord, a three-fold demonic cord of Jezebel, because her power cannot operate by herself. She has to have others to join forces with her in order to defeat your life. You got to get to place yourself, my, my brothers and sisters, that you realize that the enemy is working against you to stop you in your track. And you got to trust God and his word to defeat the enemy in your life and help you overcome. Because so many times we try to fight a battle by ourselves, knowing that I'm not strong enough to overcome certain, certain sins in your life. You need to confess your fault to one another. You can be healed from those things. So many times we try to conceal our sins in our heart, strongholds that we've been battling with for a long time, and we're afraid to tell other people about it because we're afraid they're going to talk about us or spread gossip about me. But you need to pray for God to lead you to certain individuals in your life who you can confide in, who can become your confidant, who are going to be right there with you to help pray your way through certain situations, to break strongholds off your mind and your heart together. And God would do that. God would do that. He said, I asked the congregation to pray with me and rebuke the manifestation of Jezebel. Suddenly, the dizziness and confusion left. I was able to proceed with my message and expose the Jezebel stronghold. That is so amazing. Oh my God, that's so amazing. That lets you know that one, when we come together in one accord and we stand together against the force of Jezebel, that spirit has to be broken by the blood of the Lamb and by the name of Jesus Christ. It has to flee from your church. Since Jezebel hates repentance, look at Revelation chapter 2, verse 21. I'm going to turn there. Revelation 2, 21. Revelation 2, 21. My, my, my. It says, I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. This was God talking. This is God talking to the church. The spirit of Jezebel, the seducing spirit, that fornicating spirit, says he gave her the opportunity to repent, and she repented not. How many times has God gave you chance after chance after chance after chance to repent of your wicked ways, your secret sins, your lies and deception you have in your heart about yourself, about other people, and you refuse to repent? 
That is a terrible place to be in in your heart because you don't realize the danger you put yourself in with God when you refuse to allow God to purge, to refine and perfect you through the blood of the Lamb and cleanse from all unrighteousness. We have to get to a place in ourselves. We stop resisting and opposing God. I was determined to defeat her tactics by leading the congregation in prayer of repentance. Listen to this. When we began to ask the Lord to forgive us, if we had ever tolerated the, that demonic power. Right in the middle of the prayer, a woman in the congregation began to scream and falsely prophesy. The very thing I'm just talking about, that Jezebel spirit, when it brings disruption, confusion in the house, began to scream and yell false prophecy. Yea, says the Lord, I am not in this place. I am not in the dance. I am not in the prophetic ministry. I am not here. My, my, my. Pay attention, people. Then she fell to the floor and did not move as if to persuade us that she had been slain by the power of God. When I read this, I just had to laugh. I, I, I laughed as because I've seen this very thing happen before. In my years of ministry, different ministries I, I served under, I seen false prophets come into the house of God and begin to speak false prophecies in the atmosphere and, and, and say things God did not tell them to say. And, and then they begin to fall on the floor and shake them like, they, like they're under a spell. And, 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 and the pastor would get up and realize not the, not the Lord would go to the individual and begin to cast their spirit out. I haven't seen evangelists do the same thing. Cast out that Jezebel spirit out of people who are being disruptive in the house of God. I remember the one ministry I, I was uh, part of. And this, this pastor came from Chicago. And he started a ministry here in Milwaukee. I forgot the name of it. And there was a young man who come to church drunk all the time. And sometimes he'd get disruptive. And the pastor, he taught us that sometimes you ain't got to say a word because the Holy Spirit will convict the individual themselves. So the pastor started having a Bible class in his house. The young man would come to the Bible class and get disruptive. And the pastor kept teaching, ignoring that spirit, never acknowledged that spirit, and kept doing what God told him to do. And the young man got convicted and got up and left. And the pastor said, sometimes you have to rebuke those spirits and sometimes it's best to be quiet. Because you got to operate in the spirit of God to know when you are to encounter a demonic force. Because they'll become very argumental and defensive. And you got to know exactly how to encounter certain demonic spirits. Every spirit is not going to go out easily. Some spirits goes out with a fight. And you got to pray that God give you discernment on what spirit you encounter. Jesus told his disciples, when the man brought his child to his disciples to cast out a spirit of his, his child, they couldn't do it. And Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus commanded the spirit to come out of him. So the boy fell on the ground going to convulsions. And, and then he got up. He was in the right mind. He was having seizures. And God healed him. He said, this kind come through prayer and fasting. Unless you pray and fast, some spirits are not going to leave you. They're going to continue to manipulate, to influence, to discourage, to try to defeat you and steal your anointing. 
My husband, Mickey, and I looked at each other, both aware of this false voice. It was a Jezebel manifestation. The nerve of that spirit, I thought. I signaled to our usher to help her stand up. I was getting angry now. Listen to this. Here I was teaching against witchcraft and the assignment of Jezebel and the spirit itself rose up and attempted to gain attention. You hear that? I've been teaching for quite a while now about this book. Breaking the threefold demonic order. The enemy's mad about that. And the reason why he's mad about that, because he's being exposed. Anytime you expose the enemy in your life, in the areas of your life, your family, your children, your finances, your health, the enemy gets upset. Because he wants to continue to gain control in your life. But we have to recognize that as I seek the Lord, God will give me the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, how to deal with and defeat certain spirits in my life. How could a true prophet of God prophesy and proclaim, I'm not in the prophetic ministry and I'm not here? If God was not prophesying, then who was? You hear that? Ask yourself that question. If someone tells you God is not in your life, prophesying a lie to you, do you ask yourself, ask yourself the same question? Then who is it that's speaking to me then? Because God will validate his word. Mickey and I knew that Jezebel is attracted to true prophetic ministry. You hear that? Jezebel spirit is attracted to a true prophetic ministry. She's attracted to your anointing. When you operate in the prophetic anointing, you walk in your purpose and the calling and assignment on your life. The enemy is attracted to what you're doing. Because of who Christ is in you. It's not about you. It's about the Christ in you. So he attacks you to take the Christ out of you. You hear what I just said? That was very profound. Because the enemy knows the anointing is Jesus Christ. Who dwells in you as the hope of glory. So that hope of glory is my expectation that one day when Christ comes, I'll live with him in eternity forever. So he has to discourage you, distract you, to stop you from walking in your purpose. We asked her to commit to our new members class. And some counseling. Listen to this. At first she squirmed, got uncomfortable. Now she's uncomfortable because now she's being exposed. Searching for all types of excuses as to why she could not attend the classes. And then came the big question. Why do I need counseling? You hear that? I've known people in broken marriages. And they come to the pastor that many came to me before. And I encouraged them to seek counsel. And they felt within themselves, I don't need counseling. He not going to listen. She not going to listen. We, we ain't going to change because the same thing. Every time we try to change, we revert back to the same old situation. He do the same thing and she do the same thing. So they blaming each other because the spirit of Jezebel, it passes blame. It never wants to confess the truth about yourself. So when I say you need to seek counsel, Red flag goes up in the spirit. The reason why they don't want counsel because they're afraid the secrets of their heart are going to be exposed. 
Isn't that something? God knows what he's doing. He knows how to get our attention. He knows what to do to change our lives. But we put up so resist, so much resistance. But we know we need change in our lives. We know our hearts need to be changed. We know our minds need to be changed. But we got so much rebellion in us, it puts up a wall of resistance. Let's go on a little further. So finally, I had, up, I had opened the door to speak to, truth to her. I explained that I had discerned she was operating in confusion. And that she had experienced periods of rejection. Now the Lord is using the pastor in a prophetic word to speak to this lady about herself. And he told her he picked up in the spirit that she had been in confusion and had experienced rejection in her life. Then he says, I tried to be loving and helpful as I continued to minister to her through the word of knowledge and prophetic insight. There are some people, I don't care how much you prophesy to them, if their mentality is not in the realm of the spirit, they're going to reject it. They're not going to receive it. No matter how much you try to beg and plead to them, that God is speaking to them. God is about to do something in their lives. God is about to change their life, change their destiny, change their direction. Only if they repent, stop doing the things they're doing, and give their life over to the Lord, they put up this wall and say, nope, I don't receive it. That ain't from God. Because sometimes God would prophesy a word of rebuke to you and to the house. To get things that's out of order back in order. So we got to learn how to listen with our spiritual ears and not be so quick to rattle off with our mouths. The word says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. If I hear something I don't like, I reject it. That's the human nature. But when you're walking in the spirit, and you hear a prophetic word that you know is talking to you. You know when it's talking to you. You know when God's reaching your heart. Stop resisting. Lift your hands up. I surrender. You're talking to me, Lord. Yep, that was me, God. You're right. That was me. I repent now, God. Just give him, God, what he want. Repentance. And God will fill you with refreshing of his spirit to restore you and empower you to break free from the threefold demonic court that's been holding you in captivity. Let's go a little further. The anointing was upon me as I spoke truth. The Holy Spirit ministered to her and she began to weep uncontrollably. <laughs> now watch this. Now she's been convicted Spirit of God is speaking to her. Now watch what happened after this. After some intense ministry, she submitted to counseling and deliverance. I wish I had a good report to share. How many times have you ministered to people and it seemed like they were receptive to your ministry, ministerial gift and anointing on your life and it was helping them and they were being delivered and set free? And then you see them a few days later. They're right back where they came from. You know why? Because the heart of man is prone to do evil. The heart of man desires to do wickedness. And God is trying to change our hearts, trying to draw us out. But we go back in. He's pulling you pull it for the resistance. You ever play that game tug of war in your young life? Where two teams get together, a team of four, and, and there's a, 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 a maybe a mud pit in the middle or 
or a ditch in the middle or something, and you got to pull the other team over into that ditch or into that mud pit. And whoever got the strongest team can pull, can pull until they cause the other team to fall down. And they win, win the resistance battle. There's a tug of war going on in each and every one of us. It's a tug of war of the spirit of God and the spirit of your flesh. And both are doing like this, pulling apart. One trying to pull you, the other one pulling the other way. Sin over here, righteous over here. So righteous trying to pull you, sin keep pulling you back. The more God pulls, the more you resist and pull back. So you find yourself going back to the thing that you've been delivered from like a dog returning to his vomit. Jesus said, no man puts his hand to the plow and looks back. It's fit for the kingdom. He said, like a dog returning to his vomit. Are you one of those tonight? God has been tugging at your heart and there's been a resistance. You haven't surrendered yet. God is calling you tonight to give up and let go. He wants you to come in to his presence. He wants you to surrender to his lordship and authority. He wants to break the back of the enemy off your life and set you free. But he can't do it until you stop resisting. Let's go on a little further. So I wish I had a good report to share. During ensuing deliverance sessions, the woman refused to repent and continued to make excuses for her behavior. You know, I know preachers the same way. I was one of those myself at one point. God delivered, you go back. God delivers, you go back. We're human beings, right? We all gonna make a mistake. We all gonna fall. Stop making excuses when you mess up. Repent, because God knows your heart anyway. Stop trying to justify the reason why you keep doing the thing you know that God told you not to do. I'm guilty of myself sometimes. Want to justify the wrongdoings. And God says, if you have a repentable heart, he wished that none would perish. He threw out the lifeline for you and for I to draw us into repentance. That we receive the salvation. Salvation is your deliverance, the wholeness, your wellness, your life is attached to Jesus Christ. She accepted no responsibility for her actions and continued to blame others. It's Lashonda's fault why I keep messing up. It's Pastor Denise's fault why I keep talking about folk. So we want to blame people when it's your fault. So I'm not going to admit it's my fault that I yielded in temptation and I fail, but I'm blaming everybody else for the influence. I found out something from serving the Lord. Can't nobody make you sin. They can entice you and bait you like Satan does to lure you into a place of darkness. But you have to make the choice. God told Joshua in chapter 6, somewhere in there, in chapter 6 of Joshua, said, tell the children of Israel, I set before you life and death. Choose life and live. That you and your descendants may live. You have to make a choice. Either you're going to live or you're going to die. Either you're going to repent or keep making excuses. Are you going to surrender or keep running away? The choice is up to you. Read this last point that we pick up the rest next week. 
But after her sessions, she phoned the church member to complain about our lack of anointing. And she manipulated other members to feel sorry for her. She made her way onto our intercessory team and attempted to control the prayer meetings. That's how the enemy is. Once he get in, he don't stop from just coming in. He's not going to stop until he gain total domination of your life. To control your thought life. And to keep you in rebellion. Because that's his purpose. It's to control the way you think. And the way you respond to God's love. Because he wants to fill your heart up with animosity and anger and bitterness and resentment. Where you don't yield to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But God is saying tonight. The choice is up to you. You need to make a decision in yourself. I'm not going to continue to make excuses when I mess up and make mistakes. But I'm going to have a repentful heart, a caring heart, a loving heart about my salvation and about my Savior. And allow our Lord Jesus Christ to clean me up and put me right back on the street path where I need to be. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you tonight for this lesson. Pray that him not fall from deaf ears, but it brings conviction to all of our hearts, oh God, to want to live right for you. To stop making excuses, God, for our shortcomings and our failures. Your word tells us for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We're guilty of that, Lord. But thank God for grace. Because your grace and your mercy, it covered us in our weak and fallen state of mind. We were sinners. Yet, God, you came and saved a wretch like us, oh God, and brought us to fellowship with you through your son, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, for giving us another chance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen. I want you to repeat after me this, this one simple prayer. Each week we do this. You might be one who don't know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. The word said, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. You can have that everlasting life, that, that eternal life, that's knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That thou shalt confess thy mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord, thou shalt be saved. And believe your heart. Believe your heart, you can be saved. God is calling you tonight. You might be a backslider, one who once walked with God and you strayed away. I encourage you tonight. Pray this simple prayer and God will restore you. He will refresh you. He will place a fresh anointing upon your heart to live a more fruitful and free life in Christ Jesus from this day forward. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Lord God, to forgive me for my sins, knowing and unknowing, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me for the times I made excuses, for my shortcomings and my failures. And I ask you, oh God, to cleanse my heart, cleanse my mind, Cleanse my mouth, oh God, and help me to guard my ear gate. That you, Lord, would become my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer tonight, you just got born again. The Lord said the shepherd left a hundred sheep, went to go find that one that was lost, the ninety-nine sheep to go find the one that was lost. And you are that one. You gave your life to Jesus Christ tonight. He came and found you. That he can come and live in your life forever. Amen. 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 I thank everyone for tuning in tonight. God bless you, Pastor Kenny. Bless you, sir. My cousin. Thank the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah.
Amen. Thank all of you for joining in tonight. Dr. Denise, Dr. Terry, and Shonda, and many others who might be on here, because I don't see all the names on here all the time, just so you know. So I'm not going to attempt to even try to call all the names that aren't here. But I pray that you all have heard something tonight that will in inspire, that will edify, that will build you up in your faith, to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And know that you are a winner in Christ Jesus. You're an overcomer. That God loves you more than you can imagine. And all you got to do is just love him back in return. That's all he's looking for, a heart surrender. If this has been a lesson, been a blessing to you, I want you to sow those Facebook stars tonight. Those stars add up to money for the mission. Thank you, LaShonda, for your stars you sold tonight. Amen. God bless you. It adds up to, to money for the ministry, and it goes right back into the ministry. Any, any donations that you give for the ministry, it goes into the ministry. So if you want to give a donation to Cash Up, the links are on attached to this uh, comment section of the, of the live feed tonight. You can sow a donation to the ministry, and that, that will go right back into the ministry. Amen. It also helps provide like the books that I've been teaching and things I've been studying to help God's people. But you all stay encouraged. Don't give up the fight. Fight the good fight of faith. And the good fight of faith you shall overcome as a winner. Amen. Amen. Anyone got any questions, any other comments? Thank you for your comments tonight. God bless you. Amen. Amen. To God be praised. Amen. I love teaching this word. I love teaching this. It really blesses me because it's helped change in my life as well. We all are going through a purging. I was just telling somebody this yesterday. We all are going through a purging, and God is trying to perfect us to be better every day to be a witness for him in this world because everywhere we go, people are perishing all around us, and we are the light of the world, and we are the shine bright for Jesus. Amen. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. You all have a great night. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Until next week at the 6 o'clock hour, we resume again. You all have a great and a prosperous week. Know that you are victorious in Christ Jesus. That God loves you and I love you. Have a good night.